Hello, 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 and welcome to Paper Mache Sparrows. So I've been getting so many requests about how exactly one homeschools, because since um, if you're watching this in the distant future, we are in 2020 and we are, most of the world is in coronavirus lockdown. So a lot of people that used to trust schools fully and so on are starting to actually consider homeschooling instead of sending their kids back to school which I think is delightful because the more homeschool is the better. And I do personally believe that if you can't homeschool your own child, consider a college school, but I would always say number one option is homeschool yourself um, and then a cottage and then a private school and then maybe consider a public school. But um, I think you as parent know what's best for your child and I think you can meet their needs best because you know them best and you care the most and you love them the most. And for that simple reason, homeschooling, I would always say wins. So how do you practically get started? I'm very handy today, I'm sorry. So how do you get started with homeschooling? Firstly, I would say, look at the end first. So what do you wanna do? Where do you want your child to end up? Where What's your end destination? Do you want your kids to have that little slip of paper that says, yay, you matriculated? Or um, do you want them to travel the world? Or do you want them to start their own business? Or um, what is the end that you kind of have in mind? Okay. And you don't have to be 100% certain about this because, I mean, life happens. So for us as an example, I have, um, well, we have decided that for now we would like my eldest to do a GED eventually down the line because she's more of a life learner. She's probably going to be an entrepreneur. She might go into some, um, some eclectic studies. She's not going to become a rocket scientist or a um, biologist, not at the moment from what we can see, but we are teaching her um, the basics of what they need to know for a GED. She's turning 13. And then we are also adding on a lot of other things so that if she decides that she maybe wants to do Cambridge, then we can go that route. Uh, so I'm not dumbing her down. We're feeding her a lot of information, a lot of um, stuff, good, good knowledge um, with, the, with the eye on we could go either of those directions. So first start with the end in mind, kind of figure out where do you want to go with your homeschooling. I made a few notes because I tend to um veer off into funny directions so after you've started with the end in mind you need to decide on an approach so how are you going to do this practically how are you doing this um, there are many ways that you could do this but settle on an approach for now the three main things i would suggest looking at is either a formal approach i will go into that now um, eclectic schooling, which means you take a little bit from everywhere and you make your own Frankenstein <laughs> homeschool um, setup, which I also love. That's something I've been doing for many years. And the last one is unschooling, which for me personally is too unstructured. I know a lot of parents love it. And if you are one of those, go for it. Um, look into it. Look into it. That might just be your thing. So the different approaches I was talking about. I follow a Charlotte Mason approach because I simply love the living books. I love the fact that she taught them the, um, the more study subjects like math and um, grammar and all of those and philosophy and all of those hard subjects. And then she also added in lots of art and lots of riches and beauty and literature and um, music and dance and all of these things. And she also believed that all children, no matter what their income, deserve the same education, that you should teach all kids the hard skills, like the things that they need to know. And then you should also bless their souls with a lot of beauty, which I truly do believe in. Art, art is something I think is so therapeutic and it's so good for all kids. Um, anyway, I'm staring off again. You see what I do? So Charlotte Mason is something I love. I would definitely recommend it. Then another one to look into is Waldorf, especially for the younger kids, that might be your thing. Um, and then the last one is classical that I just want to mention, which is more hard, hard. So I kind of gave you the three. So Waldorf is very, very play-based. Charlotte Mason falls kind of here in the middle. And then you have uh, classical, which is very um, uh, rigid. So 
look at all, all of those look at other approaches and just do your research take your time don't don't freak out and oh my word i need to homeschool like just chill out take your time research the things speak to your husband or your wife if your daddy watching the video um and find something that kind of speaks to your soul you know something that um that makes you excited about all of this um, the one I do not like is school in a box is like a um, pre-packaged curriculum. I'm not a fan, but I do know some homeschool moms that really love that. Uh, so also maybe look into that, but I would never personally consider it. Then, okay, so we started with the end in mind. Then we found an approach. Now next, we're going to uh, find a curriculum. So. You need to ask yourself, first and foremost, how much money do I have to spend? Because that'll determine if you're going free, uh, low range, or expensive, right? That's going to kind of narrow your options down already. Now, you need to think about, um, so let me just check so I don't forget anything. So if you choose to do a curriculum, right, if you choose not to unschool, if you choose to get, do a curriculum, you need to set up a budget. And then you also need to figure out, are you doing a physical book curriculum or are you doing something online? Because that will also tie in with who you're going to go with, how much it's going to cost and all of that stuff. Okay? Um, if you do choose to go free, I absolutely personally love um, the Ambleside online website, which is absolutely amazing. And... Um, the other thing, you know what, let me show you actually what it looks like quickly. So the other one to consider is simply Charlotte Mason, but that is a uh, paid curriculum, obviously. Another free one is Easy Peasy, which Easy Peasy all in one. I'll show you now. Ambleside online. Let me just run a quick search here for you so I can show you. And then Easy all in one. Okay, so I'm going to share screen for you quickly. Share screen, there we go. Okay, so when you're on a search, there is Ambleside Online and there is Easy Peasy All in One. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I went high school. I don't want high school, I just want the normal one. There we go. <laughs> okay, so for Ambleside Online, this is what it looks like. If you have a group, if you have, and I'll do another video explaining how to use it for groups, um, here's the curriculum. There's introduction, what are they all about? There's the emergency lesson plan if you just need to get something done, if it's a family crisis or a, or a pandemic. Um, there's the Charlotte Mason series, which I highly recommend you reading. It's absolutely amazing and it's for free available online. Yeah? There's the parents review articles and there's their library. So when you go to curriculum, you can simply select your um, grades. So you can go year by year, let's say year one. And that gives you a breakdown. If you click here, it gives you the weekly uh, the PDF schedule that you can print out. There's a breakdown and then you can scroll all the way down and it gives you a, a proper breakdown of everything. If you click on, I'll also do a video on how to actually use Ambleside, how to, where to find everything and how to find it and how I go about, well, how I used to use it because I used to use it for many years. This is all in one homeschool. So this is easy peasy. And then on the right here, you can select whichever topic you want to teach. Let's go history ancient. And then you can get a great load of uh, information off of here. So it normally gives you links to things, for example, build this pyramid, read about the civilizations, and so on and so forth. So let me stop the share. There we go. So you have, a, you have an introduction to some of the things I use. Another one I would really uh, recommend is Khan Academy. I'll show you what that looks like now too and it's absolutely amazing for math and again it is free right so when you go share screen there we go khanacademy.org and there's video lessons and the kids can level up which is really great you see this is the this is the login page the kiddies can log in um, and then they can upgrade their avatars and it's like a point system and it's, it's awesome. I highly recommend it. I've used it for many years. And I think that's a basic rundown of the resources that I use. Okay, so moving right along. So you found your curriculum. So you started with the end in mind. Now you've got your approach. Now you found your curriculum. Now you need to set up a space. Okay. As you can see, this is my homeschool space behind me. So over there, we've got my um, habit tracker. I've got my group behavior chart, my, our routine. I've got um, some of my 
two of my um, preschooler found two dead bugs. So we mounted those in little bug boxes. There's our fungi unit that we did this term. And my whiteboard, my trusty, trusty whiteboard, which I absolutely love and cannot work without. So this is our homeschool space. Over here, I've got the kids, um, their, their writing books. And I've got my bookshelf on my other side, which has all of my reading books, all of my files, all of my planners, all of my, my printer and everything else school related goes in there. So this is our homeschool space. I don't have books lying all over the place. Uh, we might have a reading book up in the rooms and so on, but I don't, I don't keep curriculum supplies and stuff upstairs. So find a physical space in which you can school. So it could be a study, it could be the lounge, it could be the kitchen table. Uh, you just need a designated area, maybe one cabinet, where you put all of your homeschool supplies. Because otherwise, I promise you, week one, your child is going to misplace their writing book, and you're going to spend a week looking for it, and then just be not motivated to do school at all. So have a designated home for all of your stuff. And I would also recommend having a proper home for all of your art supplies because I have a weakness for nice pens and cookies and highlighters and stationery. And so I have a special place for all of that on top of the fridge where the little ones can't reach it because... <laughs> so during nap time, that stuff can come down and then can be used by the older ones. But um, I have a home for everything. That is my most important tip on that one. Um, is find a place for all of your supplies. Make sure it's comfortable and make sure it's inspirational. I love my wool because it's, it's pretty, okay? Um, so make it inspirational, make it a comfortable space, make it an inviting space, and make it somewhere where the kids want to learn. If that means throwing a nice rug on the floor, go for it. If that means putting a uh, shuffling the chairs around a little bit, do that. Just make it comfy. And if you find that your child prefers lying on the couch, head upside down and reading that way, leave it. That's good, okay? Because if they're reading, they're reading. Doesn't matter how they do it. Don't um, get rid of the whole mindset of school at home. Get rid of the whole desk, chair, sit still, shut up, do your work um, type thing. Play nice background music. If you go and search on YouTube, there is so many. Uh, there are so many nice jazz morning playlists and tribal music and Barcelona. Like literally, you can look for any theme. And you can even play music according to your theme. If you're doing, let's say, history, medieval times, go and search for a playlist of medieval times music. And you're going to get this awesome backdrop and the kids are going to love it. I promise. Okay, well, I hope. Mind, mind you. So there you go. Find your space. Set up your space, sorry. And then second last one, find a community. This is important because without a community, you're going to feel lost. You're going to um, turn into a puddly crying mess and you are possibly going to give, end up giving up which we don't want so find a community um if you can find a physical community that's great when it's not locked down we have co-op we have extra murals we have lots of homeschool moms that get together i have lots of homeschool mom friends we get together very frequently when we're not like this you know so um find a physical community if there isn't a physical homeschooling community close to you consider starting one consider starting a co-op and if that's not an option, then look for online community. There are tons of homeschooling groups online that suit your approach, that suit um, your kind of uh, um, what you're trying to do, right? There's Charlotte Mason groups. There are Christian homeschool family groups. There are um, get-together groups. There are big, we have a big um, homeschooling and SA Facebook group that is so supportive. It's amazing. Um, so find a group online if you can't find a physical group. And uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to, I think that's what I wanted to mention there. Perfect. Okay, cool. So last one, last one. So we've done, start with any mind, find an approach, find a curriculum, set up a space, find a community. Last one, just do it. Just do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, just do it. Um, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be super homeschool mom after the first week. You're going to feel lost. You're going to feel like your kids aren't learning enough. You're going to feel like you're not keeping up with whoever you're trying to keep up with. You're going to feel like everybody's judging you. Just do it. You're going to be imperfect, but that's perfect. Your kids are going to love you for it. And in the end, just remember it's a journey. You're learning together. You're going to get there together. And you are learning just as much as your child is. And you're going to grow in your relationship. And don't let the stress cause this to not work, okay? Let go of all the stress. Let go of all the preconceptions. Let go of all your um, misconceptions about what 
homeschooling is and just be just embrace it it's a journey it's awesome it's flawed it's crazy it's gonna teach you so much just do it okay i'm proud of you well done go out and homeschool away let me know um what videos you guys would like to see let me know what else i can do to help you guys because i know a lot of people out there need help right now so let me know how i can help and like subscribe and comment if i need to add anything else in have a good day bye homeschool on